What's going on, Dolph fans? It is your boy, Dylan, and it is time to do my breakdown and post-game analysis for the absolute beatdown that we had to endure uh, yesterday in Tampa against the defending Super Bowl champions, Tom Brady and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Um, it was super unfortunate. Um, unfortunately, I did not get to watch the game live because I, uh, you know, my source, my streaming source, unfortunately, was not up and running. Um, hopefully, you know, I just did a replay, uh, a live stream replay reaction. Hopefully, I won't have to do that again uh, going forward. Uh, shout out to Grandizer and a couple other people who were, you know, trying to hook me up and, and gave me some, some options. So, shout out to them. Um, hopefully, I won't have to do that again. But it is what it is. Um... Let's go ahead and get into this because, look, you know, I predicted 33 to 15. That was, you know, somewhat based off of, um, you know, what each team was doing um, points per game wise. And then, you know, figuring in the other factors uh, on top of that, I was pretty close. I ended up being pretty close to what the Dolphins ended up scoring. Obviously, we scored 17. Let me go ahead and swap over here. Um and, you know, but the Bucks scored a bit more than I was expected. Um, it's not a complete surprise, unfortunately. Uh, you know, there was definitely potential for this. And they certainly could have even scored more points, really. They could have gone up over 50. They could have ended up having, like, 52 points because they were down, like, within the five-yard line um when they when they ended the game and they just knelt the ball a couple times they could have probably punched in a touchdown and got another you know seven points or at least kicked a field goal and made it 48 to 17 to make it even that more embarrassing but they did not um thankfully because we definitely didn't need that it was embarrassing enough um and look i'll just before i actually get into the stats and stuff look you know the offense and the offensive line played marginally better. And actually, if I'm going to keep it real, a little bit better than what I would have expected um, uh, with this off uh, with the defensive line they were going up against. Um, but it was marginal uh, if we're keeping it real, if we're keeping it totally real. Um, right. So it was marginal and it's still not good enough. Um, you know, and it was only brief moments. After all, we only scored 17 points. We couldn't do anything other than that, right? Uh, just real quick, the, the lineup. So we've played five different games, and in each of those games, we've had a different offensive line uh, lineup. Um, it's changed literally every week. This week, it was Eichenberg, Jackson, Mance, Hunt, and then Davis. And it was the best uh, showing so far, to be fair to them. Um, but like I said, overall, it's still marginal. They need to find... I mean, again, I, you know, I'm not convinced that this is going to be a problem that, act, that ends up getting solved at any point this year. Um, but, you know, they do got to figure out who the best five actually is. And then let them fucking stick together and stop switching this shit up. If they want to have any chance of having, you know, any level of real cohesion and consistency. Um, but yeah, I mean, the defense didn't play very well. And overall, the team didn't play very well, as is indicated by, you know, the further breakdown once we get into it. Um, you know, overall, right? Like I said, there are some bright moments in the offensive line and the offense in general. Um, you know, they did a little better today or yesterday rather, uh, and then the defense just, you know, they couldn't do anything. Um, real quick too, I do want to throw out there, and, and Reason had put a, uh, a poll up on Twitter about, you know, has Brian Flores lost the locker room? And I think that has a lot to do with it, bro. Like, if I'm keeping it real, I think these guys are just not really all that bought in. Um, and so anyway, let's go ahead and get to this breakdown though. So the Dolphins do drop to one and four. The Buccaneers rise to four and one. It was obviously a 45 to 17 margin. They actually absolutely destroyed us and they covered the spread. It was a 10 point spread going into it, but they obviously far exceeded that. 
We had 301 total yards. They had 558. We gave up 558 total yards. I mean, it's just outrageous. Uh, we had 262 in the passing game. They had 437. 39 rushing yards for us. I mean, come on, bro. And again, like Miles Gaskin, they actually used him a couple times. He had five average, a five yard per carry average, and they didn't use him. Um, or well, in the run game, they didn't use him. Um, they did uh, use him in the pass game, and he actually led us in passing, which was cool. And and they, it was nice to see that they did use him more overall. Obviously, Parker sat this game out. He wasn't active. Um, so yeah, anyway, let's just, let's continue on, man. There's just, there's so much that needs to improve still. And I'm hopeful, I'm hopeful that, you know, I, we haven't heard yet. Like Tua hasn't been officially activated yet. It seems like he is going to practice this week and there is, um, no reason to believe that no logical reason as to why he shouldn't return. Um, but, you know, he hasn't practiced in three weeks. He is, you know, how do we know exactly where those ribs are? Because, look, you know, ribs can take longer than three weeks to heal. So is he going to be, you know, still dealing with that? How's that going to affect him? You know, et cetera, et cetera. So we'll see how that plays out. But I am hopeful that Tua coming back does help to improve the offense a little bit more even than what it was today. And maybe they can even get back to being competitive and respectful and, you know, I don't know, beat the Jags because they're supposed to fucking beat the Jags. But we'll see. We'll get to more of that later, obviously, um, down the week as things progress over the course of the week. So, uh, and... We gave up 121 rush yards, 5.9 yards per play, which is solid. That's pretty good. We did give up 7.9, though, which is not good. Uh, we lost one fumble and threw one interception, which that interception was completely on Jalen Waddle. Just hit him right in the hands. It, it deflected and went right into the hands of a defender. So, you know, unfortunately, not only are they misusing Jalen Waddle, but he has, it is true that he has had a significant amount of uh, drop passes, including one that led to an interception. They did not fumble or throw an interception. What that means is, unfortunately, the Dolphins' streak of consecutive games with the takeover has ended. It has officially ended at 26. So that sucks. Uh, you know, and last week you might have... Last week, really, it, it, it only continued because of the muffed punt, right? So, you know, unfortunately, I've been telling people, man, this defense was going to decline. There was no way that they were going to remain... First of all, they weren't elite last year. They were really good in three important categories. Turnover... Turnovers, third down, and red zone. That's true, but the rest of their statistics they weren't very good in. So elite defenses aren't shit in a bunch of statistics, but, you know, really good in just a few. But I told people, though, that shit was not sustainable and it's not going to carry over and this defense is going to take a significant step backwards. And especially if he is losing the locker room, if Flores is losing the locker room and guys aren't, you know, in it, and bought in, well, that's a huge issue. Anyway, so third down percentage, the Dolphins were only 28%, which is pretty abysmal. We gave up 72%, which is also abysmal. They had the ball for 37 minutes and 7 seconds. We had it for 22.53. We had five penalties. They had six. Jacoby Brissett, he had a solid day overall. And again, that's in part because the offensive line actually gave him, you know, a number of occasions where he did have a pretty clean pocket. Uh, 27 for 39, 69.2% completion percentage, 275 yards, two touchdowns, one interceptions, and a not, one interception and a 95.6 passer rating. Tom Brady was 30 for 41, 73.2% completion percentage, 411 yards, five touchdowns, and no interceptions with a 144.4 passer rating. Blaine Gabbert ended up coming in because there was no point in leaving Tom Brady out there. They actually did bring in some of their reserve offensive linemen and stuff too. He threw three of three for a hundred yard or hundred uh, percent completion percentage and 41 yards with a 109.4 passer rating. Miles Gaskin led the way for us and really he was the only running back that had any uh, stats worth you know mentioning. 
because as you guys know, I require at least 10 yards uh, and or a touchdown to be included on the list. So Miles Gaskin had five rushes for 25 yards and a five average. But again, they didn't really run him. They only gave him five carries. So that's still, you know, their commitment to the run is still a very big concern. Leonard Fournette, 12 rushes for 67 yards, one touchdown and a five average. Giovanni Bernard, four rushes, 21 yards and a 5-3. Ronald Jones, five rushes, 21 yards and a 4-2. And even motherfucking Tom Brady threw in one rush for 13 yards. Miles Gaskin, as I mentioned, led the way in receiving for us. 10 of 10 for 74 and two touchdowns. Preston Williams, 3 of 5 for 60, had a decent day, finally, again, right? Um, he did get a little banged up. He's one of the guys on the injury watch because he did get a little banged up, came off to the sideline at one point limping. Um, so that'll be something to keep an eye on. I mean, all of our weapons. But we knew this, and this is one of the things that I said was going to be an issue. These dudes are not going to fucking stay healthy, bro. And look, Parker missed this game. Fuller's on IR. They obviously traded Grant. And Preston Williams gets banged up. So, you know, Jacoby Brissett, he got banged up too in this game. He was gimpy at some points. Uh, both guys ended up returning, um, you know, so that is good, but just stuff to keep an eye on. Mike Isicki was 4 of 7, 43 yards. Jalen Waddell, 2 of 6 for 31, including one of those drops being the interception. Uh, Durham Smythe, 2 of 3 for 23. Sylvan Ahmed, 2 of 3, 16. Adam Shaheen, 2 of 2 for 15. And Matt Collins, 1 of 2 for 10. Antonio Brown was 7 of 8 for 124 yards and two touchdowns. And, I mean, we just could not cover these guys. And, look, you know, part of it, too, is as though they're just really good. They're just really fucking good. So, you know, is is X having the greatest year so far? No, he's not. Um, but nobody on this team really is. And this is a tough team to defend against. So, you know, just for context and just to be fair, but... Anyway, Mike Evans was 6 of 8 for 113 yards and two touchdowns. Chris Godwin, 7 of 11 for 70. Leonard Fournette, 4 of 5 for 43. Tyler Johnson, 3 of 3 for 42. OJ Howard, 2 of 3 for 19. Ronald Jones, 1 for 15. Giovanni Bernard, 2 of 2 for 14 and a score. Cameron Brait, 1 for 12 yards. Defensively, as you guys know, they have to have at least three solo tackles and or one additional stat to be on the list. Jerome Baker led the way. Six solo tackles, one assisted, one sack, and one tackle for loss. Javon Holland, five solo, two assisted. Nick Needham, four solo tackles. Jalen Phillips, three solo tackles, one assisted, one sack. It was really nice to see that Jalen Phillips was able to get a sack on Tom Brady. That was fun. And it was one of the, you know, few bright moments in this game. He also had a tackle for loss. Xavier Howard, three solo, one assisted tackle and a pass defense. Byron Jones, three solo, one assisted. Raekwon Davis, three solo, one assisted. And it was nice to have him back, although it didn't really obviously do and you know very much. So that's unfortunate, but it is nice to have Raekwon Davis back. He did have a knee brace on, so hopefully he can stay healthy. Landon Roberts, two solo, one assisted, one tackle for loss and a pass defense. And Andrew Van Ginkle, two solo, one assisted with a tackle for loss. In total, we had a decent amount of total tackles with 42, but 16 assisted tackles is not very good, and they did not do a very job, a very good job of getting hats to the football in this game. And part of the reason why they had so many big explosive plays because they just weren't tackling. Um, two sacks, four tackles for loss, and two passes defensed in total. Devin White led the way for them, five solo tackles, three assisted. Mike Edwards, five solo, one assisted. Jamel Dean, five solo tackles, the one interception that bounced off of Waddle's hands for six yards and two passes defense. Jordan Whitehead, four solo tackles. Shaquille Barrett, three solo, one assisted, uh, one and a half sacks, and a forced fumble. Richard Sherman, three solo tackles. Levante David, one solo, one assisted, one sack. Ross Cockrell, one solo, one assisted, one pass defense. Vita Vea had one assisted uh, tackle, a half sack, and Indama Kinsu, all the only stats he had was um, one fumble recovery. And so look, again, to be fair, they definitely did have one of their better days, especially against uh, a really tough defensive line. 
So, you know, give them credit for that. But again, you know, we have to keep it real and it's still not, you know, good enough and they still have to improve uh, dramatically if they want to be able to turn their season around. And again, also, you know, the uh, the situation and the, the issues are uh, many. They're multitude. It's not just the offensive line. It's not just the quarterback. It's a lot of things. So a lot of things need to improve if they want to have any hopes of turning their season around. Totals, though, they had 26 total tackles, 23 assisted, three sacks, one forced fumble, one fumble recovery, one interception for six yards, and three passes defensed. In the kicking game, Jason Sanders was one from one on his field goal, long of 23, two of two on his extra points. Ryan Suckup hit his one field goal for 42 yards and six of six on his extra points. Bradley Pinion missed a field goal, which is the one that they tried at the end of the first half. Um... Let's see, Michael Pilardi had four punts for 38.5 average, one inside the 20 with a long of 44. Bradley Pinion only had to punt one motherfucking time this entire game for one, uh, one and it was a, it was a, it landed inside the 20, and it was for 41 yards. Uh, neither team had a kickoff return, and they were the only ones that had a punt return. Jalen Mickens, uh, I screwed up, though, because... I forgot to actually, this was not accurate. Uh, so I don't know what he, hang on, hang on, hang on. Because I'm silly and for some reason I forgot to change it. Oh, but that's because he didn't have, it's not a negative 0.5. He just didn't have any return on it whatsoever. No yards. That's what it was. Okay, now let's get back to it. Let's get into these league standings uh, for the Dolphins because... Um, they add important context and unfortunately we're not very good. Um, you know, there's a couple points where you see, you know, an upwards green arrow, but it's obviously very marginal improvement. Our offense is still pretty garbage in every category. Our best category is 26th and that's with ties included. Otherwise it's, it's 31st. No, uh, 30th 29th 29th is our best league standing when you don't take ties into account 26th with ties i mean it's just it's not good and our defense when when i get to that here in a minute took some pretty major hits so total yards were up to 1309 for the season a marginal improvement up to 30th although um this obviously doesn't include the game that gets played tonight with the Ravens. It's the Ravens and the Colts. And the Colts are actually one of the teams that are below us. And unfortunately, they're likely to jump us after this game gets played because they're not far. They have like three. They have like 1,300 and like two yards or something like that. So they're literally right behind us. They will jump us. And I mean, unless they don't get any yards in this game, which is impossible. Uh, we will end up dropping back down to 31st in the league. So it's unfortunate. Yards per game, we did have a slight increase from 252 to 261.8, but we remained 31st in the league. Total passing, we have 1,073. We remained 29th in the league. There was no change this week. Passing yards per game, we did again have a slight increase, um, about 15 yards worth from 199.5 to 214.6. So it is heading in the right direction. But unfortunately, though, it's such a marginal increase that we actually ended up having a decrease in our league standings from 29th to 30th. So a marginal decrease um, with a marginal increase in per game average. How's about that? Total rushing, we have only 352 yards on the season. That drops us from 28th to 32nd. Rushing yards per game, we have we went from 78.3 down to 70.4, dropping us from 28th to 32nd. Uh, same, same thing. Total points, we only have 79, which is 31st. And there was no change this week. With ties included, we're 26th. I think that actually dropped, though, from 25th to 26th, if I remember correctly. Points per game, we had a super marginal um, increase from 15.5 to 15.8, which is 31st, no change there, and 27th with ties included. Defensively, and this is where you'll see the biggest changes, 
uh, unfortunately, most of which are not good for the Dolphins, and we de uh, declined, we regressed, and dropped down the, the standings. So, yards per game, we were giving up 388.3. After this game, it's 422.2, dropping us from 25th to 30th. Passing yards per game, we were giving up 268.5. That increased to 305.2, dropping us from 18th to 28th. Rushing yards, we have a marginal, marginal increase or, well, decrease in our per game average and a marginal increase in our league standings from 136.8 to 133.6, uh, 27th up to 24th. So that's positive, although it's still, you know, obviously 24th is still not very good, but, uh, you know, it is what it is. Points per game, unfortunately, that went up from 27.3 to 30.8, dropping us from 25th down to 30th, 27th with ties included. Takeaways, we didn't get any. As I mentioned, our, our turnover streak ended, so we remain at 6 on the season. That drops us from 10th down to 14th, 6th with ties included. Interceptions, we remain at 2, which is... Uh, taking us from 21st down to 24th or 7th with ties included. Fumbles, we remain at 4, which is still 4th in the league, though. Um, you know, so that's good. Uh, tied for 3rd. Sacks, we went from 7 to 9. We did get 2 in this game, so, you know, uh, keep going up. And it did increase us, a marginal increase. I mean, we're still on the back end of the league, going from 27th to 25th, 9th with ties included. But we do obviously like to see improvement anywhere we can get it. Passes defense, we went from 22 to 24 on the season, which was... Um, oh, wait, that arrow is not correct. I am sorry about that because we actually dropped... Um, let me go ahead and change my arrow here. But we actually dropped from third down to seventh in passes defensed, but fifth with ties included. And then third down percentage with the 70 plus, I think it was what, 72% that we gave up on third downs to the Bucks. We went from 54.2% with an increase to 57.1, which puts us dead last in the league. You know, our best was last week at 31st in the league, so we definitely... Or so we dropped back down to 32nd, which is obviously terrible. Um, but again, that was one of the stats that I said was not going to... Now, did I expect them to drop all the way back down to 32nd in the league? No, but I figured they would probably drop into that they would regress to maybe somewhere in the middle of the pack. Well, unfortunately, it's been far worse than even I thought it was going to be and so to this point. And so they definitely got to fix that. Key points analysis, did we win? Obviously not. Let's do a quick drive-by-drive -drive breakdown. Dolphins did receive the ball to start. They kicked a field goal after eight plays to make it 3-0. to zero. Bucks then go right down after eight plays of their own to score a touchdown, making it 3-7. to seven. Dolphins then score a touchdown. They answer after eight plays, 10-7. Bucks then score a field goal at the end of the first quarter after 10 plays to make it 10-10. And this is about where the competitiveness ended. For a moment in the second half, you thought, hey, man, maybe uh, maybe we can get ourselves back into it. And then, you know, that super faded really fast. But that was, you know, this 10-10 margin was basically the end of the competitiveness, as you will see. Because then the Dolphins go three and out to start the second quarter. Bucks then get a touchdown after only three plays, which makes it 10-17. Dolphins then punt after six. Bucks score a touchdown after 13 on their fourth drive, making it 10 to 24. Dolphins then have their fumble after five plays. Then the Bucks miss a field goal to end the half, uh, which was the Bradley Pinion miss. And, you know, I, it was close. And if they would have made that, obviously it would have been then 27, uh, 10 to 27. So, but we were lucky. We, you know, it wasn't as embarrassing because, you know, they missed that. So, let's see. Bucks then received the ball to start the second half. We did force a punt after four plays, so that was nice to see. And that's what I'm saying. There was a, a brief moment in the second half where we thought, man, maybe we will be able to get into this and keep it competitive because we got to stop after just four plays. 
didn't allow them to score points, and then go down and score a touchdown after 11 plays of our own, making it 17 to 24, and then it just fell off the rails from there. Bucks get a touchdown after 13 plays, 17 to 31. Dolphins then go three and out to start the fourth. Bucks get a touchdown after four plays, 17-38. Dolphins then throw the interception that bounced off Waddle's hands after three plays. Bucks then get another touchdown after three plays of their own, 17 to 45. Dolphins punt after five plays. Bucks end the game after 10. And if look, if I'm keeping it real, if it was me, I, at a bare minimum, I would have kicked the field goal. But they were within like the five yard line, man, and they definitely could have made it even more embarrassing, bringing the score to 52 uh, if they wanted to. Thankfully, they didn't. Um, because it was, like I said, it was already embarrassing enough. Um, and then just, you know, as I mentioned, Preston Williams and Jacoby Brissett were the two guys that had injuries in this game. They did both return and end up playing the rest of the way. Um, but yeah, man, uh, obviously injuries have been a major concern of mine this season. And that was one of the, that was another area that I it wasn't just because we were sustaining a bunch of injuries early in the year and in preseason and in training camp that was concerning enough but it was also because of the fact that last year part of the reason why we overachieved was because we actually remained one of the healthiest teams in the league throughout the duration and we were able to take advantage of that but that's not sustainable Right? You can't guarantee that you're going to stay that healthy every year. And obviously that has not been the case this year for the Dolphins. And so that's why, you know, it was a concern of mine. All right. Anyway, obviously that game was a fucking disaster. But two is going to be back, uh, you know, presumably this week. Um, he should be. And hopefully he will be enough to help, you know, bring this offense to life a bit. And, you know, get us a win against the Jags. Because if we lose against the Jags, it's a wrap at that point. You can say it's a wrap on the motherfucking season. The Dolphins fan base is going to be completely bought out. They're going to be like, fuck this shit. You lost to the fucking Jags in London, bro. Like, And then, you know, I think at that point, he will have fully, fully lost the locker room. Uh, Brian Flores, that is. So... Anyway, we'll see how it goes. Hopefully, though, that doesn't happen, and hopefully we can, you know, get things together, have a turnaround. I'm still not really convinced that we're going to make it to the playoffs, but hopefully at least Tua can come back, stay healthy, and, you know, we can at least play some respectable football going down the, the rest of the season. So with that, I'm going to get out of here. I hope you guys appreciate my perspective. If you do, excuse me. Make sure you hit the subscribe button. Make sure you hit the like button. Make sure you hit the bell if you want to get the alerts. Share my channel and video with your friends and family. Leave your questions, comments, and concerns down in the comments section. Of course, as always, follow me on Twitter at Dylan Tartaro. And with that, I am out. I'll see you all soon. Fins up.